Jacob is a simple man. He, he hardly owns buildings and shops and things like that. Yet, he's the most corrupt person in the land. Caucus that the NEC of the ANC has decided to recall President Zuma, and the deadline is today. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as President of the Republic with immediate effect. In the past few hours, it's been announced that South Africa's top court has sentenced the former president, Jacob Zuma, to 15 months in jail for contempt of court. Well, it is our leading story. Former President Jacob Zuma is now a free man. This after his report back to Escort Correctional Facility that lasted less than two hours. But I'm not going to leave politics. And I must find a way how to stop the ANC from the direction it is taking. When they went to arrest the old man, then it was a mess. A, a discussion which I had with President Ramaphosa. But you can't do what you're doing. You're going to make him a hero. Born in Nkandla, KwaZulu Natal, in 1942, Jacob Zuma grew up in modest circumstances. His father, a policeman, died when he was young leaving his mother to support the family by working as a domestic servant. With no formal schooling, Zuma's early life was characterized by hardship. Yet, it was these very struggles that fueled his determination to fight for a better future. Zuma joined the African National Congress in 1959, driven by a desire to combat apartheid. His activism led to his arrest and imprisonment on Robben Island for 10 years, alongside Nelson Mandela, and other prominent anti-apartheid activists. This period was formative, deepening his resolve and commitment to the cause. After the ANC was unbanned in 1990, Zuma returned from exile. He played a crucial role in negotiating the end of apartheid and was instrumental in bringing peace to KwaZulu-Natal during a period of intense political violence. His loyalty and dedication to the party saw him rise through its ranks. By 1999, he was appointed deputy president of South Africa. Their problem is that they don't know that the people know me better than they, they do. That's a problem they have. Even the media, they think they know me better. No, the people of this country know me better than they do. They know better how honest I am than they do. In 2005, Zuma's political career faced a major setback he was implicated in a corruption scandal involving a multi-billion dollar arms deal. Though he denied the charges, President Thabo Mbeki fired him. In December 2005, Zuma faced another scandal when he was accused of raping the daughter of a family friend. Zuma admitted to having sex with the woman, but insisted it was consensual. The trial was highly publicized, and Zuma's claim that he took a shower after sex to prevent HIV transmission was widely mocked. However, in 2006, he was acquitted of all charges, which bolstered his resolve to reclaim his political standing. Undeterred, Zuma fought his way back to the top of the ANC. His populist approach and ability to connect with the poor and marginalized played a crucial role in his resurgence. In 2007, he was elected president of the ANC, setting the stage for his presidency. In 2009, Jacob Zuma became the president of South Africa. His election was seen as a victory for the underprivileged, but it also marked the beginning of a presidency marred by controversy and scandal. The dreams and hopes of all the people of our country must be fulfilled. There is no place for complacency, no place for cynicism, no place for excuses. Zuma's early years in office were characterized by ambitious policies aimed at addressing inequality and poverty. Initiatives like the National Development Plan sought to transform the South African economy and uplift marginalized communities. However, his administration was soon beset by allegations of corruption and maladministration. The most significant scandal during Zuma's presidency was the state capture controversy. It was alleged that Zuma had allowed the Gupta family, wealthy businessmen with close ties to him, to wield undue influence over government decisions. 
The allegations included manipulating cabinet appointments and securing lucrative contracts. The Gupta family's influence over Zuma's administration was exposed in a series of leaked emails and investigative reports. Public outrage grew and calls for Zuma's resignation intensified. Despite his denials, the evidence against him was mounting. Between 2010 and 2018, Zuma faced multiple no-confidence motions in parliament. Each time, he managed to survive, often by rallying his loyal supporters within the ANC. However, his grip on power was weakening. Within the ANC, factions were emerging. Many party members were disillusioned with Zuma's leadership and the damage it was causing to the party's reputation. Cyril Ramaphosa, Zuma's deputy, became a leading figure in the movement to oust him. In February 2018, after years of scandals and political pressure, Jacob Zuma was forced to resign from the presidency. Cyril Ramaphosa succeeded him, promising to clean up corruption and restore integrity to the government. Zuma's fall from grace seemed complete. The Constitutional Court makes the following order. It is declared that Mr. Jacob Gelechegis Azuma is guilty of the crime of contempt of court for failure to comply with the order made by this court in Secretary of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into allegations of state capture, corruption and fraud in the public sector, including organs of state. In 2021, Zuma's legal troubles took a dramatic turn. He was sentenced to 15 months in prison for contempt of court after refusing to testify at a judicial inquiry into corruption during his presidency. His arrest sparked the deadliest riots in South Africa since the end of apartheid, resulting in over 300 deaths. The July 2021 riots revealed deep-seated frustrations and divisions within South African society. While some saw Zuma as a victim of political persecution, Others viewed the violence as a sign of the country's ongoing struggles with inequality and economic hardship. Zuma served only three months of his 15-month sentence before being released on medical parole by President Ramaphosa. The decision was controversial and seen by many as an attempt to placate Zuma's supporters and avoid further unrest. Despite his legal battles, Zuma remained undeterred. In the lead-up to the 2024 elections, he announced his intention to return to politics. However, he was legally barred from standing as a member of parliament due to his conviction. In a surprising move, Zuma formed a new political party, Umkonto Wesizwe, MK, named after the ANC's former armed wing. The party quickly gained traction, especially in Zuma's home province of KwaZulu-Natal. Zuma's 2024 election campaign was a spectacle of defiance and charisma. His familiar dance moves and fiery rhetoric drew large crowds. The MK Party's manifesto launch at a packed stadium signaled that Zuma was back, ready to challenge the ANC. The 2024 elections were a turning point in South African politics. Zuma's MK Party secured 15% of the vote, a significant achievement for a new party. The ANC, for the first time in 30 years, lost its outright parliamentary majority. The Zuma tsunami had reshaped the political landscape. The MK party, with its deep symbolic ties to the anti-apartheid struggle, attracted many former ANC supporters. Zuma's ability to connect with the marginalized and his portrayal as a victim of political vendettas resonated with many. Jacob Zuma's political journey is far from over. His ability to rebound from scandal and maintain a loyal following speaks to his unique place in South African politics. As coalition talks continue, the impact of Zuma's return on the country's future remains uncertain. <laughs>